Hello everyone. It's indeed inspiring to see you back again. And we are here in this business analyst series. We are going to help you with step-by-step -step journey to learn and develop your skills as a business analyst. Here, you will learn a lot about how to interact with client, how to capture the user stories, how to document them and produce BRDs and SRS, how you can do the data modeling part, UML modeling, software methodologies, Agile, Scrum and DevOps, so many and so much things to learn. So I insist you to go through this particular series and get an advantage on business analyst. So UML diagrams, it is basically unified modeling language. Unified modeling language evolved just because there are so many different, different standards or basically I'll say if there are so many different, different standards, so nothing remains standard. Okay. Because everything, everyone follows their own way. Now getting an example here, let's say I want to represent a system and the system is a computer let's say and i decided to represent a computer like this at the same time there is somebody called as rohan rohan also wants to represent a computer and rohan decides like both are independently working i'm independent he is independent rohan decides to represent a computer this way so this is Rohan's representation of computer. Okay. Rohan is representing this way. This is the computer for Rohan. Now, I am showing a relationship between a computer and a mouse. So let's say, assume that this is a mouse. Okay. So I'm showing relationship between mouse and computer. Okay. And the relation I show is with the help of this arrow. It's a bi-directional array, arrow. But the same mouse, okay, he basically tries to show us so he uses maybe this way. So now you see that both the lines are different. This line is a straight line and this line is not a straight line. It's basically having some not straight but some folds. So both the lines may have different meanings to different people. Okay. Now, this was only I have drawn. Now, basically, a person comes from, uh, let's say, XYZ place, and he meets uh, Rohan, and he tries to discuss the designs. And the same person meets me as well and discusses with me. Now, because that person is discussing for the first time with me and for the first time with uh, Rohan, so he basically got confused that uh, I am saying that this is a computer and Rohan says that this is a computer. I am saying this shows the relationship and Rohan says that this says the relationship. Okay, so we both are saying different things. Now, what this client will do, like what kind of impression or what kind of uh, understanding this client will have? Simply, he'll get confused. Why confused? Because somewhere it is rectangle, somewhere it is a different shape. So therefore, we need standard. Okay, we need standard. And that standard basically who brought UML. UML, that is Unified Modeling Language, UML, okay. Now UML have got diagrams and these diagrams are divided into especially two 
categories. One is structural diagram and another would be behavioral. Behavioral diagram. So one is structural and second one is behavioral diagram. Okay. So two types of diagrams are there. Now, if I talk about structural diagram, structural. Okay. So structural basically means, structural means the composition. Okay. Composition. Example. I want to represent a, a, a mobile. So what does mobile consist of? Okay. How the mobile is created, not how, like what are the things in the mobile or connected with the mobile? So maybe screen, okay, mobile screen could be there. Then uh, some buttons could be there. And uh, then mic would be there. Then some input, uh, let's say speakers would be there. Okay. So the structural component tells about whatever system is there. I'm talking about mobile over here, but whatever system is there, that particular system will be made up of certain things. So that basically we need to put over here in the functional requirement. Okay, now moving further. Now, next is behavioral. So, in case of behavior, behavioral requirements, what will happen? Uh, again, let's talk about mobile. They tell about functionalities. Okay, functionalities. If you talk about mobile again, so it can start. It can stop. So we have start, stop, calling, messaging. So these are the functions which we can perform in a particular mobile. So diagrams are there to show the structural nature of an application. And diagrams are there which show the behavioral, functional, both of them. I'll give one one example for them. Now, structural. One example is uh, use case diagram. Use case diagram is one of the examples. USE use case D I A G R A M. Use case diagram. Okay. Let me give you one example over here for use case diagram. Okay. So first of all, we have something called a system boundary. So this is system boundary. Okay. System boundary. Fine. So this means this is a system, the software or the system. And we'll have actors. So let's suppose... Uh, So this is the actor. So actor is somebody who uses the system. He's a user of the system. Okay. So there are diagrams or softwares which you can use. I'm just doing it myself. Okay. Let me group it. Actor 1, actor 2, actor 3. So actors would be there. Okay, so the actor could be, this is admin, so administrator is there, who else could be there? This is user, end customer. Okay, now, uh, let's say, 
the first activity is first use cases register. So if the first use case is register in that particular case, what is going to happen? We'll have to create a use case and use case will be created like this. And this use cases are a register. Okay. Register the use case. So this register is an, uh, a use case. Similar to register, we can have, uh, let's say, any operation like payment, okay, or uh, login, logout. This could be logout. Okay. So these became the use cases. Now, in use case diagram, if you see that, is it representing any kind of action? Like, uh, is this diagram shows that something was there? and something got changed, the answer is no. It's not showing anything like that. It's just showing if something is there as register, something is there as login, something is there as payment, something is there as logout. So all these are use cases. All of them are use cases, okay. Actors, admin, user, system, we call them as actors. And now there is an association between them. Association we can see by simply a straight line. This admin is associated with, let's say, payments. The user is associated with, with what? Maybe register and login and uh, with login as well. So the user will be connected to these things. So these lines basically show association, the kind of association user is having with the register use case. These lines shows. Now, sometimes what happens? Sometimes we have a, a admin and we have sysadmin. Okay. Both are uh, having uh, you know, two different roles, but both are the employees. So what happens if both are employees in that particular case, what we can do is now this is admin. And this admin, both are employees. Now, they both are employees. So what should happen? They should come under some senior. So this is senior. And senior is just employee. Senior means a, a generic name, not senior. Just employee. So everybody is an employee actually. So here, how do we represent? We represent it like this. We'll have one more. And this should be connected to this place and this way. Rather, we should actually choose. Let's go to format. And... Uh, um yeah edit shape it's not shape so rather we should choose uh an arrow or line because you know uh, it will show the arrow so it should be this one and it should be going from the sys admin to employee and from admin to employee they both are employees arrow because arrow will basically uh clear it that uh, they both are employee but they have a specific role sys admin and admin but they both are employees now this particular concept what we are seeing over here is called as specialization and there is a concept which is called as generalization it all depends on that how are we drawing these arrows so let me bring them here and uh, let me have it in the form of gold arrows. Where can I get the arrows? One, two. Let me take these arrows only. Okay. So now if you see that, if it is going to be like this only, like from here also, uh, let me change the and color style also, yes. So from here it is going 
and from here also it is showing the same thing that he is also employee called as generalization. Generalization basically means that if you have uh, so many things, if you have one, two, and they represent a common thing. Okay, so sys admin and admin, they both are employees. So that is called as generalization. Okay. Yeah, so you can write as well. Now, vice versa, the opposite of it, the vice versa. If we have things like this, so This is called a specialization. So apart, and we see such scenarios, a lot of such scenarios are there. For example, um, let's say we have uh, a module uh, as uh, travel. And this travel module has got local travel, national travel, international travel. So travel, local travel, national travel, international travel. So from travel, we are specializing. And generalizing means, generalizing basically means that we started up with a sales department, then we took a guy on pre-sales, we took a guy for after sales, we took a guy for promotions. Now we thought that, uh, okay, now they should, this is very generic now, now there should be specialization. We should have pre-sales team different, digital marketing team different, offline marketing team different, sales closer different, so specialization, okay, in specialization, we become more specific to a particular uh, area, domain, and then basically we split that from the generic one, and then we represent all the actions of that particular actor separately. So this is an example of use case where it is just showing us the structure, the components. It is not doing anything like making some movement or something. No, it's not doing that way. Okay, now let us move towards the next one, which is behavioral. So here what we will do, we will take one particular use case, let's say register, and only on that use case, we'll try to show that how register use case actually would work. Okay, so for that, let me first write something. The first thing we can have is we'll start, then fill details, then there will be two uh, then submit. Now there can be two possibilities. Okay, if Wi-Fi is off. Submit failed. If Wi-Fi is on, submit is successful. Okay, so this much we will show, only this much, okay. And I will take an example of activity diagram, activity diagram. So only two diagrams I'm telling you. You can make use of these two diagrams. One is use case and one is activity when you are uh, preparing a report. Okay, BRD or uh, uh, SRS, you can make use of these. So here, the first symbol we need to use is, we call it as start symbol. And this is a small circle is the start symbol. Normally, we put it in a black color. This is start. Okay. After that, what fill the details? This filling the details can be done with the help of, let me find appropriate. Mm, yeah, this one. So, fill the details. Okay. And now, 
there will be an arrow. This from start, this arrow goes to this particular place. Okay, this is back. Now, after filling the detail, there is a condition. Okay, like submit button has to be hit. So, this submit button will be represented in the form of a diamond. Submit. The form of a diamond. And same arrow will have this thing. Okay. So start, fill the details, and then submit. Done. Now there are two possibilities. The branch will come out now. A branching would happen. Okay. The two possibilities. One, one is submitted successfully. Okay. So submitted successfully. So let me take this only. This one. Submitted. And another one as not submitted. Okay. And now, additionally, we'll have Off. So these are the conditions like Wi Fi is off, not submitted, Wi Fi is on, submitted. Now, what further? Are we going to stop here? No. We have to close it. So again, fill details. Okay, do it again. But if it is submitted, then we will reach the goal state. Goal. This is goal state. Okay. Fine. So this is the final state and uh, which is the goal. This is the final state and activity is over. Okay. So here you can see there is a flow, complete flow is there. Okay. And the flow is defined by start of the activity, fill the details, submit it. If Wi-Fi is off, it is not submitted, go back again, fill the details and submit it. If Wi-Fi is on, submit it and it is end of the activity. So this activity diagram is showing some functionality, some behavior, something is happening. And on the opposite, this only shows that what it contains, like what is the user, what are the use cases? Okay, it doesn't show the flow. So UML broadly is having the structural diagrams and behavioral diagrams. So one example we have seen of use case and another example we have seen of activity diagram. Okay, so while uh, creating that document BRD and while creating the SRS, you can make use of these diagrams also if you are able to understand and comfortable. If not, I'm okay with that. You can, uh, you know, like I'll just insist that you can create uh, maybe blog diagrams or something that will be good. Okay, some sort of diagrams. Uh, by the time you are learning the standards of UML, uh, till that time you can use your own uh, brain and uh, represent things in the form of uh, blog diagrams or so. That way you can do. If you like this video, please do share it with your friends and those who need it. And don't forget to press the bell icon and also subscribe to our channel so that you can get all the videos notifications readily in your account.